Good afternoon, uh, First Lutheran Cincinnati and Philippus UCC faith communities. Uh, on this very, very cold day, I hope you're all staying warm. Um, so glad to have you with me this, the, this afternoon for midweek prayer. I wanted to share something today as I was sort of uh, cruising through my, uh, cruising through my, uh, the, my articles for the week, just sort of things that I was reading and uh, trying to get some ideas on. And if you're a, a theology nerd like me, uh, a lot of the content that, that you find on social media is all around uh, biblical interpretation and theology and all that kind of stuff that's really exciting for some of us nerds. Um, but one of the things that themes that came up for me today or this week uh, was centered around humor and the Bible. One of my professors at uh, Luther Seminary, uh, Rolf Jacobson, uh, talks a lot about humor in the Old Testament, humor and in the and uh, the Jewish scriptures, and it's a really sort of fun way to read scripture and to interpret scripture. I know in Christian tradition, it's not something that we do a whole lot of um, in in many branches of Christianity. Sometimes we get uncomfortable with the idea of reading too much humor or uh, too much nuance into the text. Instead try to fall, in, we, we sometimes fall into the trap of reading the Bible literally as it is on the page. But I think in doing that, we sometimes lose the faithfulness. We lose the um, the, the reality in which the Bible was written. It was written by, by human beings um, who are speaking to specific situations and uh, speaking to uh, to specific audiences. But anyway, one of the things that caught my attention this week was in the book of Exodus. So you might be familiar with the, the story of Exodus. It's, you know, the, the big moment where Moses comes to Pharaoh and says, let my people go, um, trying to release the Israelites from slavery. And Pharaoh's like, no, I'm not going to let your people go. And so uh, a series of 10 plagues uh, cover Egypt. And you've got the, the plague of uh, the Nile River turning to blood. You've got the plague of hail coming down. You've got the plague of locusts and disease um, and darkness and all these different kinds of plagues. But one in particular was really interesting to me. And you'll miss it if you're reading an English version of the Bible. Uh, the interesting thing is in the Hebrew text, when we look at the second plague, which is the plague of frogs, uh, one of the interesting things about this is that the word for frog is singular. When God sends the frogs onto Egypt, uh, God sends one frog, <laughs> one frog, uh, which could have been a mistranslation. It could have been, you know, an error. Um, but Jewish tradition has this thing where they can talk about certain nuances in the, in the text, certain peculiarities in the text, and come up with something, come up with the story behind why it was this way. And so one of the translations or one of the, the interpretations here is that uh, you have some, some uh, rabbinic scholars that see this word for frog, the plague of frog, and they think of a giant frog coming out of the Nile River and wreaking havoc on uh, the people of Egypt. And it's really a fun, playful way to look at scripture. Uh, it's not something that you'll find if you open up your your scripture because it requires a little bit of uh, it requires a little bit of Hebrew knowledge, uh, knowledge of language and interpretation. But it's really interesting. So why humor? Why is humor so important for us to look at in in scripture? And I think the answer to that is um, kind of centered around seriousness and struggle and suffering. And right now we're in the middle of that. Um, you know. We talk about COVID every, almost every single time we come on. It's just this reality of the world that we're living in. Excuse me. And so there's an aspect of suffering that people are intimately familiar with. And so how do you deal with suffering? How do you kind of wrestle with that? And so for some, uh, lamenting is a good way to just sort of uh, cry out about it to cry to God and say, why, are, why is this happening? You know, to have this sort of wrestle with God moment in, in the middle of a lament. But I think humor is also a really fun way to, to, do with, to, to deal with that. You've got the sense of levity, the sense of, of uh, silliness that's present in scripture because life is silly. 
Um, it, it breaks up the monotonous pain and sorrow that we might be experiencing uh, with something humorous. And there's examples all throughout scripture of humor. Uh, and I think we, we don't always do the best about talking about the humor or talking about these, these silly stories because we're so focused on what's the deep message. And sometimes the deep message is to laugh. Sometimes the deep message is to look at what's going on in life and to be able to laugh in the middle of it. Laughter is really a great medicine for, uh, for suffering. Some of the other stories that I've looked at recently um, that sort of demonstrate humor, uh, there's a story about God speaking through a donkey in the, the book of Numbers, which is the fourth book of the Bible. It's a, it's a book that is primarily composed of, uh, it's like a census book almost, taking the number of people who belong to each tribe of Israel. But there's this really funny story where uh, a prophet is on his way to a king who wants them to curse Israel. And on the way, uh, the donkey that he's riding uh, sees uh, an angel of the Lord, which is preparing to kill the, the prophet. And the donkey stops and doesn't do anything. And the prophet gets really mad because he doesn't see the angel. And so he starts hitting the donkey. And the donkey opens his mouth and says, why are you hitting me? You know, I'm trying to save your life here. Uh, so it's just this humor of God speaking through uh, almost ridiculous means. And that's what's really fun about scripture is being able to, to look at scripture beyond just a, a literal narrative, but understanding that scripture is composed of so many different books from poetry to uh, to narrative, to wisdom literature, to prophetic literature, like all these different things that are going on. And it's not necessarily the way that it happened that's important, like how it specifically happened one step after the other. What's important is the connections that are made, connecting the work of God with what's going on in the world. And so that's just a, a really neat way, I think, to look at it. Uh, last last year, I preached on uh, the book of Jonah, and the book of Jonah has got a lot of really funny stuff in it, too. If you've never read the book of Jonah, highly recommend it. One of my favorite books in the Bible because it's, it's so filled with ridiculousness. Uh, you've got Jonah going to the city of Nineveh, and it's a three-day walk across the city. It's so massive. Um, and then the king finds out that Jonah's preaching against Nineveh because Nineveh was this wicked city. And Jonah says that God's going to destroy this city. Um, and so the, the king decides, oh, we've got we've to gotta, <laughs> we've gotta handle this. We've got to, like, you know, atone for our sins. And so they put on sackcloth, which is kind of like burlap, the, the, the stuff that you would have um, – maybe old potato bags, just really uncomfortable clothing. And that was one of the ways in which you showed remorse in the ancient world. But they would put on sackcloth and not just the people, but the animals. They put sackcloth on the animals is what it says in, uh, in the book of Jonah. And Jonah gets so mad about this because God decides, God sees this and says, oh, they're, they're repenting, they're changing their ways. So I'm not gonna destroy them anymore. Um, and you have this temper tantrum that Jonah is throwing in the last chapter of, of that book. And there's just so much humor there. Other ways in which we might see humor is in the abundance of God. Uh, I'm preparing a sermon for, uh, for another congregation in early February about the great catch of fish that, uh, that the disciples have. And so the disciples are out on the, the boat and they're trying to catch fish. They haven't caught in anything all night. Um, and Jesus tells them to go back out onto the water the next morning and they're gonna catch it. They're gonna, they're gonna get a big catch. And it's so ridiculous. There's so much, so many fish that they catch that they can't pull it into their boat. They have to have other boats come and help them because they're getting ready to, to drown. Uh, they're getting ready to go under the water because of how many fish they've caught. Uh, and so it might necess not necessarily be the humor that we pick up on, but humor is such a big part of scriptural interpretation. Um, and I would really encourage you, if you're reading a story or you're reading a passage in the Bible, um, be attuned to some of the humor. 
God has a sense of humor. That's I've always been taught that growing up, and I, I believe it even more today than I did when I was younger. Uh, but God has to have a sense of humor. Um, levity and and humor and joy are just as much part of the the, the human human experience as suffering is. And so uh, that's sort of my charge for you today. If you can take the time and, and look at that and try to find some of the humor in the Bible, um, look for it. It's there. It's great. Um, there's a lot of really good stuff, and maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'll go ahead and close this with prayer, and then I've got a few announcements uh, I want to make sure that I highlight at the end of uh, the video today. Uh, but with that, the Lord be with you, and also with you, let us go to God in prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the blessings that you give us. We thank you for the gift of laughter and the gift of humor. Uh, we thank you for uh, the ability for us to have joy, even amidst hard times. You're present uh, both in the tough times and in the happy times, and we thank you for that. Bless us this week as we depart, as we uh, do the things that we normally do or don't normally do. Bless us and keep us, keep us safe, keep us healthy, be with those who are lonely, be with those who are in need, um, and bring us all together safely again. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this has been uh, a fun and interesting sort of uh, sort of talk about humor. And if you have any Bible stories that uh, are humorous to you, uh, share them in the comments. I'd love to, to get some good suggestions for some laughs. Uh, a couple announcements though for today. Of course, uh, Sunday uh, we'll be online again at 11 a.m. Uh, so hope to see you there for online worship. And then for First Lutheran folks, uh, just a remind, reminder that this week you're going to be receiving a ballot. Uh, we do have a congregational meeting with a congregational vote, uh, and that information that you need is going to be in that ballot that's sent to you. So um, be, be look on the lookout for that. One other thing is uh, I'm working on a document. I know that as long as we're online, we're gonna have, we might have some issues of connectivity with Zoom. Uh, that's just a reality in the technical world that we're in and it's not always easy to try and resolve that, especially when we're in the middle of service and who do you talk to and how do you fix this? Um, so I'm working on trying to get a document out uh, and available, just a, a general troubleshooting document so that if you encounter issues when you join Zoom, uh, such as audio not working or video not working or uh, unable to connect, I'll have a, a, a document with a few different steps that you can try on your own. You should be able to access it. Um, and then if you've tried all that and it's still not working, um, you know, of course, still let us know. We'll, we'll do what we can to help you. But this, this should be really helpful, I think, uh, as, we, uh, as we join uh, worship or, or any other event that we have on Zoom. It, it should be a helpful resource. So with that, go in peace. Share the love of God. Thanks be to God.